Please be seated. Psalm chapter 24 this morning. Psalm chapter 24. Well, it's hard to believe what one month is already in the book, right? One month of uh, 2022. And, um, well, I remember when I was a kid, I would think, man, the year 2000, that seemed a long way away. Any of you all remember that? And here we are in 2022. I wondered what it was going to be like. Do you all remember Y2K? Does anybody remember Y2K? We actually had three couples in our church that uh, were scared to death. And they actually left town and went to the mountains uh, to hide from everything. I uh, thought the world was getting ready to end. They had saved up um, all sorts of... Uh, and, I, I, and, if, and if you ever do anything like that, I'm going to talk about you too, okay? So, uh, 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 so anyhow, they uh, saved up and, and you'd go to their house and they'd have big barrels of barley and oats and everything else. And they toted all that stuff with them. And... Um, they, uh, all three of them ended up in, in messes in their lives, really. So very sad, uh, very sad to say. But uh, they, they, and they, they wanted me to go with them. I said, my goodness, I don't think the world's going to end until the Lord says the world's going to end. It's not going to end because man's doing something or because we're getting ready to hit the year 2000. The world is wrong with y'all. So anyhow... Uh, anyhow, we're already in 2022, and we're already one month past 2022. Now, some of y'all were born in the 2000s, and so y'all didn't look at that. But, I mean, uh, you know, if you're my age, a little bit younger, a little bit older, you said, man, what is it going to be like in the year 2000? And here we are in 2022 already, and one month into it. So it's just crazy. Now, if you've, if you've been with us, uh, you know that we've been in a series of messages and uh, you can see that on the next page up here. Uh, there we go. All right, so we've been talking about having a new heart. We've been talking about David, and he's a man after God's own heart. We've been taking a psalm, and we've been studying parts of it, or all of it. And uh, the idea that, uh, you know, David had a heart for God. Uh, he, had a, he had a heart for godliness, and he had a heart for the gospel. And uh, that's what we've talked about these last three weeks. You know, David... Again, the man after God's own heart. Now, if you've been with us on Wednesday night, you know that uh, David is far from perfect. Matter of fact, uh, some of y'all have learned some things about David that y'all didn't even know. Uh, man, there, there was, of course, he was very good and godly in so many ways, but there was times he was a rascal. Uh, there was times he was actually away from the Lord. Of course, we know he committed adultery, he committed murder, he was a conspirator, uh, and all of these things. So why in the world would God say that he was a man after God's own heart? And why should we be studying this to be a, a, like David and, and have the heart of God? Well, Chuck Swindoll wrote a book, and, and, he, and he said there's three reasons that he gave why David was said to be a man after God's own heart. The first one was spirituality. Now, this is not the message, this is just the introduction. The first is spirituality, and that means that whatever uh, God said, David did. Now again, David sinned, and we all fall sh far short. Listen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? Even the best person here today is still far from the glory of God. I got news for you. You don't compare yourself with other people, by the way. You compare yourself with God. And then you find out you have got a long way to go still. All right? You can always find somebody you're better than. You know that, right? But we don't do that. We, we compare ourselves to God and then we realize that. Anyhow, whatever God said, David did. If God said turn right, David turned right. If God said jump, David jumped. And isn't that really what the bottom line of Christianity is? Whatever God says, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. Now, uh, 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 hear and heed the Word of God. The second reason He gave was because of His humility. His humility. David became the greatest king uh, in Israel's history, but he still had a servant's heart. He was still a very humble man. And then the third reason was integrity. Uh, the Bible actually says in Psalm 78 that David shepherded uh, the people of Israel with integrity. 
You know, uh, God is looking for somebody who is humble. He's looking for somebody who uh, have integrity. And He's looking for somebody who will do what He says. And He found that person in David. And that should be our desire. Now, God has blessed us all this morning. Is that not correct? Is anybody blessed here this morning? Even if times are not good right now, I, I got news for you. You are a very blessed person. We are all supremely blessed uh, here today. And, and, and many of the blessings we have, we take for granted. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4.10, we're going to read in Psalm 24 here in just a moment, but it says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now I want you to think about that last line there, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God has blessed us in so many ways. He's given us grace. He's given us blessings. Uh, he's given us things, and we are to be good stewards. We are to be good managers of what God has given to us. Everything you have, and you'll hear me say this again, but everything you have, God allowed you to have. Now you can say, oh, listen, I've worked hard for all that stuff. Well, who gave you the opportunity to work hard? Anyhow, listen. Listen. You've got spiritual gifts. You're supposed to be a steward of that. You, you have uh, faith. You're supposed to be a good steward of that. You uh, uh, have a witness, a testimony. You're to be a good steward of that. Uh, now, you also have money and possessions, and you are to be a good uh, steward of that. And so today, the message is entitled, A New Heart for Giving. So we're going to go to the next one here, and you're going to see that, and it's in Psalm 24. Now, we'll read in just a moment. The introduction is still ongoing. As we're going to study eventually in 2 Samuel, David had a heart for the house of God. David wanted to build a place for God. Now, you say, what, what, what is the deal? Okay, do you remember the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant, uh, that was uh, symbolized the presence of God. Again, once the tabernacle was eventually, well, in Moses' day and then now in David's day, once the tabernacle was eventually established, the Ark of the Covenant, of course, was in the Holy of Holies, and you were only able to go in there, uh, the high priest, once a year. But it symbolized the presence of God. That's where God met. That's the presence of God. Now, David lived in a magnificent palace. When we were in Israel, they took us over uh, right outside the walls of Jerusalem to a place called the City of David, which Jerusalem is actually called the City of David. But, but this was uh, a little uh, place outside the walls of Jerusalem called the City of David. And they showed us uh, where they think the Palace of David was. And we got to tour a little bit of that area. And it, it was, it, they are just now uh, finding out some of this stuff and, and, and uh, doing the work on that. But David lived in this magnificent palace and God lived in a tent. A tent. And so you know what David's heart was? God, I live in this magnificent palace and you live in a tent. I want to build a house for you that the Ark of the Covenant can be in. And by the way, if you've ever studied the uh, temple once it was actually built, oh my goodness, we were able to go to the Temple Mount and, and to see the, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall uh, there, and that, that was, it was just an amazing experience uh, to be there and, and to be around that, that particular area. David wanted to build a house for God in the presence of God. Now, he asked God to allow him to do it. Most of you know the story. God said, you can't do it, David. I'm not going to let you do it. You're a man of war. You're a man of blood. I'm not going to let you do it. I know that you are a man after my own heart. And I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I've got a covenant with you. That there will always be a son on the throne. Of yours, but I got news for you, you're not going to build this house. Now, God said, I'm going to let your son do it. Now, David could have taken his money 
that he had uh, saved up to build this house for God, he could have taken his money and pouted. David could have said, I'm just going to take my gold and I'm just going to go home then if you're not going to let me build this house. But see, that's not what David did. That's not what David did. As a matter of fact, and we'll not read there for time's sake this morning, but in 1 Chronicles chapter number 29, in verse number 8, down, well, 3, 3 through 8, the Bible tells us that David may have given the greatest gift ever that this world has ever seen uh, monetary-wise. Uh, he, he, he provided everything himself for this particular house of God. So all his son had to do was just show up and, and get it built. He gave gold and silver and bronze and iron and precious stones and, and, and all of the wood, exotic wood, uh, for this house. He supplied craftsmen and workers and anything else that was needed to build that tremendous temple. And Bible scholars have gone back and looked at all of that and they came up with a figure of $20 billion. $20 billion. The amount that David gave for the temple of God. We ain't talking about, I didn't say $1 billion. I said $20 billion. Now some of you may remember this. You probably don't. I'm sure you probably just let it go out your head because you thought it was one of the dumbest things you'd ever heard. But back in uh, 1998, somebody gave $1 billion. And boy, people thought, my goodness, that's a great gift. It was Ted Turner. Some of you will recognize that name. Ted Turner gave $1 billion to United Nations. That's correct. Now, that's a waste of money. Y'all would probably agree with me on that. That's a waste of money. But guess what? If you, you can go back and read the news accounts of all that, man, Ted Turner has just done one of the greatest things this world has ever seen before. One billion dollars to the United Nations. David gave 20 billion dollars dollars to the temple of God and David would never even see it with his own physical eyes what in the world would possess a man to give that kind of gift what in the world what would cause a man to give all of his gold and all of his silver and bronze and iron and precious stones for something he wouldn't even get the credit for well, I'm going to tell you, and we're going to see this in our message today, that David realized that those things did not belong to him in the first place. Verse 1 is all we're going to read here this morning. And we're going to show you four thoughts about giving. A new heart for giving. Verse 1, Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and... The fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell within. Father God, thank you for, again, this wonderful opportunity we have to open your word. Thank you so much for it. Thank you for this example of giving from David. Lord, may we examine our hearts today in the matter of giving. And want to have a heart that is a giving heart. If there's someone here today that needs to know Jesus Christ, pray they'll turn to Him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant is arriving in Jerusalem. And David writes this psalm. And he says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell there." In. Now what I'm going to give you this morning, some of you already know, you can get up here and, and preach this message yourself. For some of you it may be something new, but I hope you'll write these things down. And listen, uh, I want to be a God-hearted giver like David, and I hope that you do as well. Number one, here we go, you'll see it on the board. We live from hand to mouth. Four principles, 
In the matter of giving, we learn from this verse right here. We live from hand to mouth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Now, how many of y'all since... um, we uh, got a new president, has been in there about a year, and, you know, we've got inflation going crazy. How many of y'all have poor-mouthed it lately? How many of y'all seen the price of gas this week? And how many of you said, my goodness, I can't believe I'm having to pay this much for gas? Uh, you know, and then other people poor-mouthed it even though, you know, they're just poor-mouthing it. But some people are poor-mouthing it because of the economy, and I, and I got that. Well, listen, they say this, well, I'm just living from hand to mouth. I'm just living from hand to mouth. You've probably heard that phrase before. Well, in a literal spiritual sense, that's exactly what we all do. We live from hand to mouth. You know what? We live from God's hand to our mouth because all the world is His. Everything belongs to Him. It's already His anyhow. And God provides it for us and we live from His hand to our mouth, whether you realize it or not. That's what you're doing. Now, again, in First Chronicles, where we, we talked about uh, uh, what talked about David giving, later on in that chapter, he says this. I want you to hear this. But he says, but and this, this is after David said, I'm going to give all of these things for the temple of God, for God's work. I'm just, I'm just going to give, 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 give. He said this, but who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. And notice the next phrase. For all things come of thee. It came from God to start with, he said. And of thine own have we given thee. In other words, uh, uh, God, you, you had all of this gold and silver and all of these things and you gave them to me. And now I'm just going to give them back to you. But uh, uh, I, I'm giving you back what you gave to me. What a thought. Can I tell you this morning that really nothing you have belongs to you? Now, we get, we get this idea again. Man, let me tell you something. I worked for years. I'd get up at 5 o'clock every morning. I'd hit the, you know, I'd hit the uh, time clock at 6.30 and I'd work my 8 or 9 or 10 hours. And I would work hard and I would manage my money and I would save my money and we would spend it wisely. And everything I have and what I have in the bank and everything else, you know, I've done it all myself. That's my house. That's my car. That's my boat. That's my retirement. That's my bank account. That's what we say. But if you understand verse number 1, the Bible says everything is God's. And you know what God's doing? He's letting you borrow it. He's letting you borrow it. Now, you know, uh, if, if, if if you realize that this stuff is really not yours, then I think you'll even take better care of it. How many of y'all ever borrowed something from somebody? Now, maybe you're sorry. I don't know, because I I know there are some sorry people in the world. Uh, I've I've heard of some stories, you know, where people borrow stuff and bring it back worse than than what you found it. Let me tell you something. If I ever borrow something from you, which, you know, maybe maybe it happened, maybe not, uh, I'm never going to bring it back. Y'all supposed to laugh at that, okay? No, I'm going to bring it back, but I'm going to bring it back in as least as good a condition as, as you gave it to me, if not better condition. That's the only way to do it. And see, what I have doesn't really belong to me. It is somebody else's, so I want to take extra special care of it. Whatever it is. Any possession. Even my children. Uh, 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 my, my money. Uh, uh, whatever it may be, I want to take very good care of it because it does not belong to me. And really, folks, if you'll get this in your head here this morning, that what you have is really not yours. God has allowed you to borrow it for a while. And you're living from His hand to your mouth. Secondly, If you'll waste not, you'll want not. If you'll waste not, 
you'll want not. Y'all's mama ever said something like that? Y'all ever said that to your kids? If you'll waste not, you'll want not. Again, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, if I was a betting Baptist, and I'm not. And by the way, since your money does not belong to you, you shouldn't be either. Okay, if you want to, if you want to, uh, just a, a little aside there, okay? Now, the world belongs to God and everything in it. We know that He created it. We know that He controls it. We know that this planet and everything in it and on it belongs to God. But so does its people. Notice what he says. The world and they that dwell therein. The world and they that dwell therein. Listen, here's what it means. If you will live according to the principles of God's Word, the economic principles of God's Word, especially what we're studying and learning here this morning, God will meet every one of your needs. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all your, uh, all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, the word, said, the, word, the word is needs and not greed. You know, we think he, we got to have everything that we want. Well, that's not the case. Now, you will hear some preachers get up, and I hope you don't even watch this stuff. If you do, you ought to quit watching it. But there's preachers who will get up and say, well, if you send so much money, you know, uh, if you send us $1,000, well, you're going to get $10,000 back. I tell you what, I'll keep my 1000 and you send me the 10000 How about that? Let's just do it like that. Uh, but then they'll say, you know, if you, do, if you do this and do that, then, you know, it, you almost feel like you're going to end up driving a Rolls Royce or something. Or living at the Biltmore. And that's not the way it is. That's not the way God works these things, okay? But I will say this, that if you realize that everything belongs to Him, and then you practice the principle of partnership that God will supply and meet every need that you have. I believe that with all my heart. Now, uh, uh, you can say amen if you want to, uh, if you believe that this morning, because that's very important. Now, I heard this story about this woman who lived in West Texas. She went to see the governor. She was begging for her husband's release from prison. Well, she had to wait a little while, and then she was ushered into the governor's office and began to tell her story. The governor said, well, what is your husband in for? She said, he stole a dozen hams. Well, the governor said, that doesn't sound too bad. Was he a good husband? The woman said, as a matter of fact, he never said a kind word to me in all of the years that we've been married. Was he a good worker, the governor asked? No, I wouldn't say that, the wife said. He's pretty lazy. I can't remember him having a steady job. Well, was he a good father to your kids? No, he's been pretty mean to them too. He only pay he 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 only pays attention to him uh, to them unless he's drunk, and then he's mean to them. The governor looked at that lady and said, "Ma'am, why in the world do you want me to let a man like that out of prison?" Well, y'all probably know the answer, right? We're out of hams," she said. <laughs> We're out of hams. Now, I told you that to say this. You don't have to be a thief to get your needs met. You don't have to be a thief. Matter of fact, now, a lot of people steal from God. And let me tell you something. That's, that is being a thief. They steal from God. And, and let me tell you something. You want to cut yourself off from the blessings of God, you steal from Him. Let me tell you something. You do right by God, and God will be faithful. Now, some uh, and, and let me tell you this. God is looking to bless you on what you're doing right now. Some people say, well, you know, I'm waiting for my salary to increase, and, and then I'm going to do right by God. No, God's, God wants to know what are you doing right now. Some people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see when I get that promotion what's going to happen. Or I'm waiting until my ship comes in. 
Or, or God wants to see what you're doing with what you have right now. And he says, if you'll waste not, you'll want not. You'll have your needs met. Now, there's three things that I can come up with you can do with money. Three things. And if you've got another one, you can tell me after church today. But there's three things I think you can do with money. Number one, you can spend it. And boy, some people like to do that. Or you can save it. And some people do that. Or you can invest it. And some people do that. So you can spend it, you can save it, or you can invest it. Well, if you spend it, it's gone. And let me tell you something, what you bought won't last. They even got a commercial out that says diamonds are forever. Well, not really. Not really. If you save it, either the government's going to get it, When you die, or your kids will blow it. If you invest it, you might make money, and you might lose everything you got. You never know. And I'll tell you this much, the only surefire way to get an investment on your money is to send it on ahead. You ever been to a funeral? Most of you have. You ever uh, seen a hearse? I'll tell you one thing you'll never see on a hearse is a U-Haul trailer behind it. You'll never see it. You don't take it with you. You don't take it with you. John D. Rockefeller. Many of you know that name. Somebody said, how much money did John D. leave? You know what the answer was? All of it. All of it. So you can save it, you can spend it, you can invest it. And when God tells you to give and you give to the things of the Lord, you're investing it in eternity. If you don't have control of your money, then money has control of you. And you know, we think sometimes it's only the rich people that can can give to the Lord. Let me tell you something. Everybody just needs to do what they're supposed to do and God will honor that. Some of the greatest givers in the past have been people who've been janitors and other things but just been faithful in their giving. Number three, you get out of it what you put into it. You get out of it what you put into it. And of course, that's not just true about money, that's true about everything. See, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, um, you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow and you're going to reap in proportion to what you have sown if uh, if if you uh, uh, plant one seed that's you know you're going to reap if you plant a hundred seeds that's what you're going to reap you reap what you sow and so that's what we need to do Uh, uh, if you sow sparingly you'll reap sparingly if you sow bountifully you'll reap bountifully If you're stingy with what you give, God will be stingy with you. If you give abundantly and cheerfully uh, out of a a heart of love, you'll receive the same in return. So bountifully. God will honor that. And you know, we we think sometimes that God's going to make us all rich and again we're going to be driving around in Rolls Royces or something like that. No, there's so many other blessings that God gives if we just do right by Him. So many other blessings. And then fourthly, you know this one very well. You can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Do you know why you can never outgive God? Because no matter how much you own, God always owns more. You know the verse, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. You know that. Well, he not only owns the cattle, he owns the hills. He owns the minerals under the hills. He owns the sky above the hills. He owns the water around the hills. You can look anywhere and everywhere, including in the mirror, and everything belongs to God, including you. David gave $20 billion. If he had given $200 billion, he still wouldn't have been able to outgive God. Because God always owns more. And I got news for you. No matter what you give, 
You can never outgive God, no matter what you do. Now, God wants us to give because He wants us to be like Him. Is it not true this morning that God is the greatest giver in the world? He is. Now, we look at David and say, wow, $20 billion. Man, what a great giver. Well, he, uh, David could still not compare to the great giving heart that God has. Because the Bible says this, For God so loved the world that He gave. You say it with me. For God so loved the world that He gave, gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, listen to me, folks. God didn't give second best. God didn't uh, give the leftovers. You know, a lot of people say, well, if I have anything left over, I'll give. Nope. God gave the best. He, he gave off the, off the front. The first fruits. He gave the very best that heaven had, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you want to live for the Lord, if you know Him and you want to live for Him, you'll end up being a giver just like David is. Just like David was you'll end up being that same kind of giver. And you'll be like God because He is a giver. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. A new heart for God. A new heart for godliness. A new heart for the gospel. And a new heart for giving. I hope that's uh, been a blessing to you. As we start 20... 22. May it be the best year of our lives. Father God, we're grateful today that uh, we've been able to talk about giving. Thank you for being that great giver, the greatest giver, giving us the best, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we could be saved. The Lord, really all that we have belongs to you. You just let us borrow it. May we take good care of it. May we be a good steward. May we manage it well. May we be the best foreman the world's ever seen of the things that you've given us to run and to manage in our lives. Whatever it is, our faith, our witness, our testimony, uh, on the job, in the home, our money, our possessions, May we be a good steward. Lord, if um, folks need to make decisions today about their giving, I pray they will. If there's someone here that needs to be saved, I pray they'll come. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? Heads are back.